James Ernest of the Grueling Truth here with Thomas Moore, uh, basketball head coach, Drew Cooper. Coach, what have you been up to? Well, just uh, getting through the summer and, and getting excited. The kids get on campus here in about five weeks and uh, looking forward to, uh, to, to the 17-18 basketball season. Just trying to get through the summer, all this baseball talk, I'm ready to start talking some hoops. I know what you mean. I was going to say baseball, uh, I mean, it's our Americans past, America's pastime, but it just seems to go on forever and ever and ever when it comes to the pros. The weird thing is, though, the college, unfortunately, is too short of a season, but the pro season takes forever. That's uh, ironic. Yeah. Yeah, because the college, I mean, shoot, it probably ended a good month ago, unfortunately, or at least for most teams. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. No question. No question. But, uh so you know, we have, uh, in terms of our basketball season, we, we, you know, you asked what we're up to last week. It was announced that uh, we're playing the University of Kentucky in an exhibition game, which our community is very excited about. Most importantly, our young men are are very excited about it. I'm happy they'll get to to go through the experience of playing them, and uh, we have some veteran pieces coming back and. Uh, and they're getting older now, going from freshmen to sophomores to juniors. You know, I, I just, I, I, you know, I'm happy that that this experience is going to give them, you know, stories to tell about, you know, how they did against future lottery picks and things like that. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, yeah, shoot, the excitement level going into a game like that has got to be huge. It, it is huge. Uh, the, the excitement is huge. It, it, it is a little bit scary, you know, <laughs> because. You, you have a stage to perform in, in front of the entire state, uh, and I, I think it's going to be a, at a time of year that we're trying to, to still teach the fundamentals. We will not have, we will not have even had two weeks of practice under our belt uh, when that when that game is played. Uh, so it, it, we want to use it as, as a teaching tool because I'm sure we'll be exposed uh, in every way imaginable. Uh, but but that said, I think it's going to be a great teaching tool for our for our guys, and then down the road, uh, like I said, they'll be able to to tell their families about it, and and and, and I want them to enjoy it. But it's also got to be used as a learning tool. Exactly. Yeah, they'll be able to build on it, and and obviously any team that they're going to play the rest of the season. No offense to those teams, it'd be hard for them to be anywhere near as good as as the UK team you're going to face. <laughs> Right. Any team we play from there on out, they're not going to be the University of Kentucky. There's no question. Sounds great. What was it like uh, growing up in Louisville? Were you uh, were you a UK fan, a Cardinals fan? Who were you a fan of growing up back then? You know, I I liked much of the the the, the city of Louisville. Uh, it kind of goes back and forth. I think you know my dad's side is such a diehard Kentucky family and my mom's side was more of, of, of the Louisville uh, were, were, were fans of the University of Louisville so I was kind of split right down the middle but yeah, I'm going to tell you what James, I, I went away to college. I went uh, I, I was kind of put in a position when I grew up through adolescence and, and high school that I had to pick a side uh, and when I went away to college I went up to Massachusetts uh, and, and lived there for a long time, and then I lived in Europe for a while. And when I moved back to Louisville in 2007, I just evolved into a fan of, of both of them. I think we in the state of Kentucky are so spoiled uh, because when it comes to March Madness, you know, if you're, if, if you're a bluegrass native, most regularly, we get to enjoy March Madness until the bitter end. Mm -hmm. And there are so many states out there that when it come, becomes March Madness, they might have the Thursday afternoon game, their team gets beat, and they're done. And how many times, either UK or U of L, have, have we been able to sit there in the, in, in the Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, Final Game, and enjoy a team from our home state uh, you know, compete for a national championship. It's so it's so regular here that that when that doesn't happen, then then we start pout. And I just think we're so blessed. And and when I, I it took me leaving home, leaving Louisville, you know, going away to college and living here to really when I came back in 07, 
that's the way I look at it. I just look forward to watching good basketball, and we're fortunate here in the state to have our pick of the litter uh, when it comes to good basketball. And I'm optimistic we're going to have that third team in there soon, too. So, uh, yeah, shoot, you know, UK might have knocked them out last year, but uh, they got a lot coming back. Uh, there might be some gold uh, to cheer for as well in the, in the future. Yeah, very feasible. Them and, and uh, you know, WKU, EKU, Murray State, they're, they're, they're all in, in, uh, in spots that I think all, all the programs are, are, are trying to receive uh, national recognition for what they do. So, so again, we're very, very spoiled in this state, state and uh, I, I tried my best not to take that for granted. Yeah, I was going to say you're 100% right, especially with uh, WKU. They got, I believe, one or two players that are projected to be um, top picks in the draft next year. So, yeah, if they got that going for them, there's a good chance they can yep. have a good tournament going. So, yeah, you're right. Kentucky is the uh, state to be at for when it comes to uh, college basketball all around. No question. No question. So, when you went up to Massachusetts, um, How'd they recruit you? How'd you? How'd they get uh, the talk started? Yeah, it, it was it was my own. It was an NCAA Division two school. Uh, it was my only scholarship offer. It happened way late in the process, uh, so it's it, it's just one of those things. I tell every young man that we recruit that each prospect has a different story. I think in some cases, young men feel like they have to commit early. And that's not the case. I think in some cases, young men feel like they have to wait, and that's not the case. It's just what's right for that prospect and, and what's going to put him in the best position to thrive. And it doesn't matter of the timing. I was signed uh, about two weeks before classes started uh, and, and had a, just a, a remarkable experience uh, up at Assumption College, which is an NCAA Division II school. There are stories out there. Uh, when I was the assistant coach at Bellarmine University, I was the lead assistant there for six years. We signed a young man, uh, Jeremy Kendall, who really ended up being the best scorer that I've, that I've ever coached and, and was one of the two best guards in the country uh, when, when we were at Bellarmine. The ironic thing was that we had the best guard in the country, which, you know, we felt like Braden Hobbs from Southern Indiana and Jeremy Kendall were the two best guards in the country, and we, we both had them on the same team at Bellarmine. But anyway, Jeremy was signed uh, really the, at the same time frame. We signed him about two weeks before classes started, and he had kind of endured injuries three and four years out from his high school career. And, and we got him when he was a little bit older and, and, and just he came to Bellarmine and now he's playing professionally overseas. And that didn't happen, you know, until he came to Bellarmine and all that stuff. And it happened two weeks before classes started. So I, I, I think I, I think in some cases prospects get on Twitter and they, and they see that this guy's committed and this guy's signed this square and, 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 and they feel kind of the heat to, to wrap it up so they can make that tweet. And, and that's not the... That's not the appropriate way to look at it. I, I think there are a million and one scenarios of young men that that uh, either either didn't get what they wanted early, or or you know it's going to work out when it's ready to work out. And I, and I, I just I urge young men to kind of to hang in there and see the process through and be real about what's going to give. You know, the, the, the kid and the kid's family the best experience, and, and very rarely, I think, is that level. I think kids get caught up in, well, I need to go to Division One, I, I need to go to Division Two, and, and, and it's, uh, I've seen so many Division One players uh, when I was at Bellarmine come to Bellarmine in a Division Two situation uh, and have just tremendous experiences and win championships and, and walk out with big smiles on their faces. And, and that said, I think here at Thomas More, I think we have a handful of young men. I think we have a bunch of young men that uh, there would be a Division Two roster out there for them. But, you know, they, they, they've chosen to come to Thomas More, be a part of our community, get a first-class education, first-class degree, and all the while uh, be, a, be, be a functional member of a championship ball club. And that's uh, we take a lot of pride in that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you could go, you know, somewhere else and, like you said, uh, you know, have, you know, 
just not the best experience, or you could go to uh, a better university and you get a better better education. So I agree with you 100% there. It should be more about what benefits the student can get out of it as opposed to just the you know the name on the back or the name on the front of the jersey which sometimes the kids do focus on too much right right so tell us about the turnaround at assumption i mean shoot when you went up there you and uh, your coach uh, i believe it was your all's first year and went from where they were to top notch well, we, it took us a couple of years, uh, but it, 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 it is a um, it was a, a remarkable turnaround and something that that uh, I was told at the time that something I would be very proud of for the rest of my life. And I tell the kids that I coach uh, now that what they're doing it's something that they're that they're going to be proud of the rest of their life, and, and that's that's certainly what happened. Assumption had won one game in two years, and and they, they on, on they, they brought on Serge DeBerry, who was an alumnus of Assumption, and uh, hired him. I you know shortly after they hired him, uh, just they had a scholarship way late in the process. Uh, heard about me from Kentucky, and uh, you know went up there. We won six games. Uh, my freshman year, which was Serge's first year, we won 14 games. My sophomore year, which is Serge's second year, and then our third year, uh, we went 23 and 10 and won the, the Northeast 10 Conference Tournament and, and won a game in the NCAA Tournament. So uh, that was, uh, you know, again, I, I, I got to see firsthand uh, what a dysfunctional program was and how that transitioned. Uh, into a program that wins championships, and I, I think that kind of that experience—not just my experience with with going from a losing program to a winning program—but what I, I, you know, being around a, a coach with such integrity and, and, and such a remarkable, uh, who's just such a remarkable teacher of the game and a teacher of life—it uh, it really shaped me uh, into wanting to be a to be a coach and so that's kind of for me where it all started at, at, at Assumption. After Assumption you ended up going and doing your uh, graduate at, at uh, Northern. What was it like right. up there with uh, Coach Shields and uh, Coach McFarland? Yeah, no, Kenny Shields was was tremendous. Uh, I, 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 you know, Kenny Shields is actually a Thomas Moore alum so I, I get to see his, his smiling face at some of our games uh, I, I got to know Coach McFarland. I know that he is, uh, you know, infiltrated in the, in the Ryle High School community now with his son David uh, doing a remarkable job for that program. Uh, you know, Pat Ryan, and then uh, of, of course Dave Beasel, uh, who, who Co Coach Beasel is actually one of uh, you know my my mentors in that uh, he he. he, he he really helped us along this year. I was fortunate enough to have Coach Beadle, uh, you know, come over to some practices this year and attend some games and really consult uh, myself and my staff. And he was he was a big part of making crucial decisions, uh, certainly down the stretch for for our program. And uh, I, I am indebted. To the NKU community, uh, you know, Coach Beasel, Coach Hits, all of them for for what they've done for me. What was it like uh, building the Wellock program from scratch? Was that uh, similar to your assumption situation, where you know they were taking that from uh, you know one win and the two years and going up, or was that completely different uh, since you were you know now on the coaching or you were the coach as opposed to one of the players? Right. No, that, that, it was completely different because Wheelock is in a is in a neck of the woods of Boston. It doesn't even have a a gym. It, it, had, it had no gym. It had no team, and when you looked at Assumption, while Assumption was down at the time, uh, they have a very storied history uh, from the 1970s. Uh, so we all had no history. So oftentimes the question I would get when I was recruiting a young man, they would say, okay, coach, I'll come and play for you. <coughs> Excuse me. But what's going to happen if you're not able to get five guys, 
and, and, and the question was, it was uh, the logical question, and, and they just had to, uh, they had they had to entrust me a little bit with their future because they were they were putting their career on the line and coming to Wheelock, and and we were able to recruit twelve young men and, and get a team going there. Uh, and, and, and they've they've since then they actually did win a game during their first season. I was not there to coach it because I, uh, I, I I came down to Bellarmine before the program actually played its first game. But uh, you know we put that program in a position to to have its first year. So its inaugural season was 2007 and eight, and uh, it, it, so it was it was quite different just because. It was in downtown Boston. They didn't have a basketball gym. They had no history. They had no team at all. So there was, it was, uh, it, it was certainly a unique experience. So did they end up getting a gym before the season started, or did they play somewhere else, or road games? No, they they still play somewhere else. There, there's there's actually some of that that goes on. You know, there's so many small colleges in the Boston area uh, that, uh, that 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 goes on more times than you would. Than you would think. Um, so they actually still don't have a gym. They, they go other places to play their games. Oh wow! Well, I can relate to that. I had an arena team here in Northern Kentucky, the uh, Nightmare, and we played the entire season on the road. So it, it can be a pain in the neck playing all road games. So I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, tell us about that uh, 2011 title. Uh, just how it impacted your career, and just how how uh, how great that felt. Right. So when 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 I started in 2007 at Bellarmine uh, under Coach Davenport, who is who is a a member of the Kentucky Hall of Fame uh, and just a one of the more most respected coaches in in our state, and I'm saying that in a state with John Calipari and Rick Pitino, and, I, and, and when you look at what, what uh, coaches have done for programs, I, I don't think that, that someone could ask Scott Davenport to do any, any more for Bellerman uh, than he has. So when I started in 2007 under Coach Davenport, the, the, the program had just finished a 12 and 15 season, I believe. I'd have to look at that. I believe there, the, the, the 06 07 for Bellarmine was was uh, was 12 and 15. Uh, they had not been to an NCAA tournament since 1991. So at that time, winning a national championship was the last thing on anyone's mind. And you know, when I talk about that experience of assumption, I saw much. Much the same at Bellarmine, only it went to a different level as it relates to the national championship. Uh, it, 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 you know, and I, I tell my guys here at Thomas Moore uh, that for me it was the utopia of what of what being a part of a program uh, is. I, I, we did it with kids. We did it with kids that cumulatively earned a 3.0 in the classroom. Uh, we, we did it with young men that that are winners. They're winners as people. They were good kids from good families that that uh, I, I, I are now in the real world making tremendous decisions for themselves. So it was unlike any season I've been a part of, but, uh, and, and it's just something that, that I hope that I can recreate uh, one more time in my life because it, it truly doesn't get any better than that. What's your thoughts on last season? Do you feel that it was successful, or did you have loftier aspirations last year? No, I, I, I thought last year was a tremendous, it, it, that we kicked in a door mm-hmm. that we needed to kick in. James, I mean, it, it, there have been so many seasons that Thomas Moore has been right there on the brink, and it was just about getting the right kids uh, to to kick in the door and win the conference tournament championship and and win the conference and advance to the NCAA tournament, you know I, I I you know you take a look at what we did last year. It was the first time uh, in history that the program has won 20 games and, and kind of eclipsed that 20 win mark that college programs talk so much about mm-hmm. and and advanced to the NCAA tournament. 
uh, in the same season. Uh, so I don't know how you can look at that and, and, and say that I, I thought last year was a remarkable success. And I think that, uh, you know, it, it, in my world, I, I'm hoping that lessons were learned and, and our young men, uh, we have a lot of veteran pieces coming back. Uh, I, I want them to come back wanting more. I, as much as we, we, we performed in our conference and performed in the region, uh, we went to the NCAA tournament and, and lost in the first round. And I want our young men to look at that, and I want them to to want more for themselves uh, as it relates to, to, to national recognition. So I, I'm hoping that uh, our young men come back hungry for more. Yeah, I was going to say, I agree with you 100%. Huge success and definitely a good building block. I just like to ask coaches that because some coaches are so, I don't know the right way to say it, but they're just so, I guess, stubborn that if it's not all or, you know, if they don't win everything, they feel it's a, a bad year. And I'm like, no, you still can have a great year, you know, and have a lot of uh, a lot of things to improve on, a lot of things you learn about. And and just build on the players and still be a great season and not have to win every dang thing. But some of them, it, it's so funny when they when they get that way. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. No, I, I am a uh, I am a father of three, and and uh, barely I, I have a so so life is too short to go home with a grudge every single night. <laughs> you know, I do that enough during the basketball season. So uh, it usually takes me. Until you know, until late March, you know, April, to kind of look back on a season and say, okay, that was good or that was bad. Mm-hmm. And and I tell my guys this during the season, you know, I I don't like being miserable during the spring, during the summer, during the fall. So let's lay everything that we have, let's put everything we have into having a tremendous basketball season, and 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 and, and letting everything else fall into place. So uh, no, I, I I hear what you're saying, but. Uh, but uh, in, in some ways, life is too short. I agree with you 100% there. Yeah, I was going to say, basketball is an awesome sport and a great game. But, yeah, you gotta you got to enjoy life. What uh, what do we have to look forward to this season? Well, I, you know, I'm hoping that we can take the next step. You know, I'm hoping we can take the next step. I, I think it, it's uh, the University of Kentucky experience will be unlike anything our program has has been through before, and we are very, very grateful and, and that, uh, that Coach Calipari and his staff chose us to <coughs> to play this exhibition game with them. But that only goes until October 27th, and then we have a season to play. So uh, I, I, I think that uh, it, it, those 25 nights, I, I, I just I like where our program is with some with some veterans coming back. I think if we stay healthy and, and stay humble and stay hungry, that uh, that we have a chance, you know. But uh, got to play the games and and uh, looking forward to uh, uh, you know I'm looking forward to looking forward to going through it this year. Excellent. It sounds like uh, fans here in the uh, the tri-state area, North Kentucky, you know Cincinnati. If they're wanting to see some great basketball, should definitely uh, check out the Thomas Moore uh, basketball team this season. That's right, James. You said it, and I, I'll go to my grave saying this. I think that uh, I think that we are spoiled in the state of Kentucky. So kind of hear me out here, and, and, and if this if this goes to print, be careful how this is said because I don't want to come across the, the wrong way. I, I I think we have been blessed in our state uh, to have such, you know, renowned tradition with the University of Kentucky and with the University of Louisville. And this area, you can even talk about Xavier and and, and UC, there's no question. Uh, But in many, many ways, as the years have gone by, that high level, that high major, that high, high major level of college basketball, that, that in some ways very much resembles NBA that very in, in many ways resembles professional basketball. So I, I, I there's there's parts of the country, and this is going this is going back to my Massachusetts days, where small co- where college basketball in that community is defined by small colleges, colleges like Thomas More, colleges like Assumption College. So I think 
families in, in, in northern Kentucky, families in the greater Cincinnati area, if they are not busy on a Wednesday night, a Saturday afternoon, you know, and, and they, 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 then this is a great option for college basketball fans to come out and watch remarkable talent and some very, very good basketball games. Uh, it, 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 it's affordable. It, it, it's uh, and, and again, it, 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 it's a great, great level of of college basketball. So um, I, I agree with you. I'm hoping our fans, our community, kind of you know takes note of of the success that we're having and what we're doing here, and comes on out and and gives us a look. Exactly. Like uh, there was one night I was going to take my nephew and one of his friends to a basketball game, and we were looking between the teams. It was Northern's first year in Division One, so unfortunately that entire um, until January they had no home games. So that was my first choice was going to go there, and then look down at UK, and UK was fifty bucks to watch them play against Transylvania. No disrespect to Transylvania. And then, yeah, started looking at other spots and, you know, shoot uh, with Thomas Moore could take him to several games. To, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. instead of just one night of fun, you have a whole season of fun. So, yeah, definitely a much better option. Yep. 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 Exactly. And if you got a larger family, same thing. You know, you have, you know, four or five kids. You can go out and have a nice evening and still be really reasonable so yeah i agree with you 100 percent uh sounds like a lot of great things are going on up there at thomas moore and uh wish you the best thank you very much i appreciate you reaching out it was nice speaking with you definitely great talking to you as well coach and hopefully we'll have you on again in the future hey maybe uh after you shock the world down there at uk <laughs> careful careful eh, things could happen have a good one, Coach. Uh, you as well.